Hello, noble ones. When in Rome, do as the Romans. When speaking about Italy, speak like the Italians do. All right, so I'm not ripping off Metatron for no reason. Uh, I, I'm actually going to be talking about something very Italian. Uh, and actually, in doing my research for uh, what this video will be about, um, well, Metatron is someone I reached out to for help. And as much as that man knows, I found the one thing he doesn't know anything about. So, um, I just kind of wanted to talk through an interesting kind of research adventure I had and how it came to a conclusion. This has been like eight months in the making in terms of coming to a conclusion. However, um, the research itself is actually pretty minor. But I thought it was really interesting and I thought it might make a very interesting video that talks about something that a lot of people just don't know about. So I was approached by a friend who basically told me, look, I don't really have that big an interest in swords, but I do want a sword that represents something about my heritage. And I was like, okay, well, that, that can be really easy, especially since this person is Italian in heritage. There's a lot of swords out there that can be Italian. So really my question wasn't, you know, well, where are we going to look for this type of thing? But really it was more, well, what can we narrow it down to? And uh, this took a lot of really interesting turns because, well, um, you can think of like the Roman gladius. That's a pretty ubiquitous idea for an Italian sword, but that's very representative of, of Italy as a whole in a lot of ways, or at least of Rome or the Roman area. So then I started thinking, okay, well, we could talk about you know, types of rapiers or certain type of Italian longsword designs or anything that really just came from Italy. And there's a lot to that. So I decided to ask a question that I didn't know was going to lead me down a rather odd rabbit hole. And that was simply this. Okay, Italy is a pretty big country, modern day Italy, and it's a diverse, uh, it kind of breaks up into very diverse regions. So maybe I'll find a sword from a specific region that stands out as a little bit different. So I asked him, where does your family come from? What area? And he said, oh, it's the uh, Abruzzo area. I was like, I've never heard of that, the Abruzzo area. And I'm probably not saying that exactly right, but I went and searched for it. And it's on the uh, eastern coast, of the leg of, of Italy. Um, and it is the most backwater area uh, that ever has existed in the European continent, as far as I'm concerned, because there is so little information about this region. And even more surprising, I couldn't find a single instance of like an Italian kind of design sword that comes from that area. So, uh, at least in my basic research, so I decided to reach out to our good friend, Metatron. And I asked him a really simple question. What can you tell me essentially about the Abruzzo area? And this was his response. <laughs> Now, I'm not going to hold it against him. It's not like I can speak uh, in great depth about the history of even my own state that I live in in the United States. And that's not even, you know, the next door neighbor in terms of region. That is exactly where I live. And I may not know all the history of it. So certainly you can't expect someone like Metatron to just know everything about Italy. So, eh, kind of struck out there. I appreciate his willingness to help, though. So I started doing some research about the Abruzzo area, and I came across uh, a statue, came from archaeological dig, and the statue is called the Warrior of Capistrano. And it's a beautiful statue, very old. It's made out of limestone and incredibly worn down, which really just means that there's not a lot left to see of it. But I began doing some research on this statue because it does have a sword in it. Now, this statue is actually pretty, like I said, heavily degraded, and even parts of the sword are kind of worn away. Uh, but I started doing some research, and there's this wonderful page called uh, saniti.info, uh, and they have a subpage that specifically talks about the warrior of Capistrano, more specifically the swords that are associated uh, with the one that is in this statue. And... Uh, and they have a great image that kind of shows the outline of the sword. And it looks really familiar, but I couldn't quite place my finger on it. But I said, you know, that's definitely kind of that more Greek-looking design. And uh, so I started doing some research and found out that the Abruzzo area of Italy 
is an area where there was, surprise, surprise, a lot of commerce going back and forth to Greece. And so a lot of the swords, a lot of the weapons in general that are associated with the Abruzzo area of Italy are actually directly tied to a lot of Grecian weapons because that's where they imported it from. And so unlike where you get the Gladius coming, springing out of Rome and that's kind of their signatory weapon, uh, the Abruzzo area is much more tied to Grecian weapons. It's like, great, I have now narrowed this down. But I wanted to go a little bit deeper. So I knew what the general design of the sword kind of looked like, and it looked very familiar, and I began to think, you know, it looks a lot like a Xiphos. Uh, now, we, I think, within this larger YouTube sword interest community know a lot about the Devil's Edge Xiphos for good reason. It's gotten a pretty good reputation, and a lot of people have talked about it. But I wanted to get one that was truly representative of the Abruzzo area. And the only thing I could think of is we have to find a type of sword that is looking like really closely to this statue's sword, uh, or find one that's actually directly related to the excavation. And uh, digging a bit deeper, you can go to my armory, and there's actually a, a, a thread on there, rather old thread, a lot of dead links that talk about some of the finds uh, within this area. Uh, so the, uh, the area that was dug up, it was called uh, Campavolano, and I'm probably not saying that right either, but it was uh, this archaeological dig that happened. And they, uh, they found quite a lot of things, being one, the statue, but they also found a sword. And I actually found this in this My Armory thread. There's a link to a PDF that was some of the research documentation on this, a little bit telling the story of the dig. And it had a picture of the sword of Campavolano. And I was like, great, I kind of have a name I can go to. I can begin to look. Maybe there's a custom smith out there who's made one. Now, see, this is where it gets really difficult when you're talking to someone who's like, I really want a sword that represents my heritage, but I also don't want to spend a lot of money. Well, that's really hard to do if you might, might have to maybe custom make a sword. So I started doing some research, and lo and behold, here comes the mass production sword company to save the day. None other than Depeka. Now, I've never actually spoken a lot about my opinions on Depeka, and I will uh, kind of end this video speaking a little about a little bit about Depeka. But they have a sword that is recreated off of one of the finds in Campavolano from the Abruzzo area. So let me show it to you. This is the sword. It's a really, really basic Xiphos. Now, um, Depeka makes moderately good, interesting, uh, very low-end, battle-ready swords. Uh, in theory, they're made of all the generally the correct materials, although things such as weight may not be as accurate as you want. But uh, as you can see, comparing this scabbard and, and this sword, uh, not just to the statue, which I think is really important, especially uh, this kind of cap piece, um, it's, it's, it's exactly the, the kind of design, but then you can look at this compared to the archaeological digs and the sword found there, and this is the sword. This is designed right off of it, uh, and it is not the most well-made sword. It's certainly pretty heavy, and Topeka is actually pretty well known for making the lowest possible end quote-unquote battle-ready swords that there are. Uh, they tend to use the right materials in general, and they tend to have a rather poor implementation overall. Certainly when it comes to weight or usability, uh, I would call that into question some. But they've done a really good job of recreating this general sword design. And I say that because when, when you look at the sword that's on the statue, uh, you can you can see that it, it looks very similar. The parts look very similar. But when you look at the sword itself from the archaeological dig, I mean, this is it. They've done a pretty good job of doing a basic recreation of it. And uh, it's an interesting implementation. So it's got this central spine, which uh, is basically like the inverse of a fuller in that it adds weight, but it also helps to add some rigidity to the blade, uh, which is much needed for thrusting. And... Um, and it's very common to be seen in much older, you know, kind of what we'd call ancient history style swords. Uh, and they have implemented this with bone. So there's bone here in the handle. It's kind of a sandwich there with the steel. And there's actually bone here in the, the chape piece 
of the, the scabbard. Uh, and that's all, again, based on the designs that come from the archaeological dig. So uh, it's a really interesting kind of take on the sword. You know, maybe not as high end as it could be, but for the price range, yeah, you know, it's not too bad to be able to pick up and say, you know, I now hold in my hands a reproduction of a sword found in an area of the world that my family comes from. And it can be in some way representative of family heritage. So I hope my friend will enjoy this sword, be able to put it on a mantelpiece. It's mostly going to be decorative, of course, um, but that can also be appreciated for what it represents. And I think that's really important. I think it's something that we miss a lot in, in terms of weaponry and all that. Is we always sometimes forget what it represents. And I always try to speak to that uh, very often. And so I think this is a good use case for that. And a very interesting piece of research. So tell me, guys. Tell me what you think. Have you ever heard of the Abruzzo area of Italy? If you have, uh, you know more than Metatron now. Congratulations. Um, really appreciate you watching this video, kind of sticking through with it. It's kind of, a, in my opinion, an interesting little uh, thing that happened. And like I said, it took a while to actually narrow it down to this specific sword. But once I did, I had all this stuff to back it up and say, hey, this this comes from something that, that really happened, was really found in this area. And I think that's pretty awesome. So cheers, guys.